What is going on YouTube? My name is Brent and welcome to part 13 of my tutorial series on how to create the game Flappy Birds. So in this tutorial we're actually going to be talking about animation and getting our little bird to actually appear to fly on the screen. Uh, we're going to be talking about frames and delta times and stuff like that so if you're interested stick with me. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new class and we're going to call it animation. Um, animation. And this class is going to have some properties. The first one being a uh, private array of uh, texture region, texture region. And we're going to call that frames. That's where we're going to store, store all of our frames. Next, we're going to have a private float uh, max frame time. That is the, the time it takes a how long we're telling a frame has to stay in view before we switch to the next one. And then private float current frame time. And that's the, the time that uh, the uh, animation has been in the current frame. Um, then we're going to have int or private int uh, frame count. That's the number of frames in our animation. And private int frame. And that is the current frame that we're actually in. So I've gone ahead and imported our libraries, our libgdx libraries for array and texture region. And so let's go ahead and create our uh, constructor. So public animation. And animation is going to take, take in a texture region first. And we're going to call that region. And then int frame count. That's the number of frames in our texture region. So the, the region is going to be all of the frames combined into one image, OK? And then the frame count is how many frames are in that image. And then a float, which is a cycle time, how uh, long it's going to take to cycle through the entire animation. So let's go ahead and get a couple things set up here. We'll say frames equals new array of texture region. And then next, we're going to set up a, pr uh, a variable here, frame width and that is going to equal the region dot get region width divided by the frame count so uh, if there's three images and they're all 16 pixels the the total would be what for, uh, 48 divided by three would be 16 so we want just the the width of just a single frame so 16 uh, next we'll do a for loop for int i equals zero i is less than uh, our frame count uh, i plus plus what we're going to say is frames dot add and we'll say new um, texture region and we'll take in our current region that we got from above and this time we're going to cut it into splices so uh, it will be i the the starting x coordinate for the first frame will be i times uh, frame width and then the y coordinate will be zero we're always going to start in the, the bottom corner and then we need to give it the frame width and the frame height so frame width is what we already defined right above and region dot get region height will be the height so I feel like I may need to explain this just a little bit more what this loop does. It takes this region, okay, this texture region, which is three different uh, frames combined into one image, and it starts with an i equals zero. So i times the frame width will equal zero. So we'll start right here in the bottom left-hand corner of our x-axis, and then on a y uh, is zero, so bottom left-hand corner. And then we're going to say frame width. So our frame width is, let's just take, for example, 16 over, which will be this image. OK. And then on the next round, we're going to start here because we're starting at I, uh, which is one times frame width, say, example, 16. So we'll start here and then we're going to take this image. And then again, the next uh, loop will start here and take this image. Moving on, we got three more things to do. This dot frame count equals frame count. So we'll set up our frames. 
um, max frame time equals cycle time, the total time it takes to get through our image, divided by our frame count, so each frame gets an equal portion. And then the frame that we're currently on equals zero, that's where we'll start. Next we need to update our animation, so public void update float delta time. This is the change in time between uh, uh, render cycles. So the current frame time plus equals delta time. That's how long uh, the current frame has been in view. And then we're going to say if the current frame time is greater than the max frame time that we'd have allowed, then what we'd want to do is frame plus plus, increase our frame, and then the current frame time equals zero. Now what happens if we're over the edge of our frames? We need to do if frame is greater than or equal to frame count. I don't know how I could get greater than, but if it's e equal to at least, um, frame equals zero, go back to the start. So we need a way to get the frame that the animation is currently on. So let's create a new method, public texture region get frame. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll say return frames dot get and the current frame that the animation is on. So that's it for the animation class. Let's move back to the bird class here. And we're gonna create a private animation and call it bird animation. And then down here, we're gonna create a uh, texture and call it, uh, we'll just call it texture. I kind of made a mistake. I should have been able to pass a, um, a texture into the animation instead of a texture region um, and then done uh, the breakdown of that texture region um, inside the animation class. But I'll leave that up to y'all uh, to do as an exercise. So texture equals new texture and we'll say bird animation dot png and then we'll do uh, bird animation equals new animation and we'll give it our uh, new texture region and give it our texture that we got we just made above and then next we're going to give it uh, three different frames because that's how many it has and then the time per frame or t total cycle time will be a 0.5 f float time now let's go ahead and get rid of our bird texture here and since we don't have bird we're just going to replace this with texture dot get width and since the get width is currently three frames we need to divide that by three and then this will be also be texture and then we need to on every update method we need to update our animation so bird animation dot update and give it our delta time and then when we're going to get our texture we're going to say bird animation dot get frame instead so now we also need to say instead of returning a texture we're actually returning a texture region and now we can go ahead and test it so let's go ahead and hit run here go ahead and let it load so I got one error here really quick and it was because we were trying to dispose of a bird texture and of course that wasn't there uh, so I've created instead of uh, the, creating the texture inside the constructor I've created it outside as the private variable and then um, we'll create it here and then at the bottom instead of bird dot dispose we'll use texture dot dispose so now let's go ahead and test it Oh, there we go. Look at that little bird flapping his wings. He has no idea what is actually coming. He just thinks this is a, a normal day. And then, up, oh, it's over. Up, oh, it's over. Up, oh, it's over. So I think that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. A little overview about what we talked about. We created that animation class and we used a texture region, which probably actually should have been a texture. And we subdivided that into littler or smaller uh, texture regions. And then we used a delta time to uh, adjust which frame we were currently seeing. Um, once uh, the frame has hit the max uh, frame time, it went on to the next frame and then looped back around to the front once the animation was completed. 
So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. I give you two big thumbs up for that. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post them below. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.